I think if we would like actually take the time and it's just all about finding the time to like, here's our five or 10 best clips and got that together, we would have had much better performing ads, even though they're performing well right now. And also interacting with previous customers to get that UGC. Uh, we start we started doing that during COVID and running like, oh, here's a $50 Amazon promotion. Like whoever sends the best video by midnight tonight gets a $50 Amazon card or a $50 gift card to their favorite restaurant. We started doing all these creative ideas during COVID. We should have been doing them six months ago. So we're getting, people are sending images of their families and friends and videos all the time. And it was tough to get that before. Getting your business to grow during a pandemic or these difficult times is incredibly challenging. So today I'm talking with Chris Mead from CrossNet. CrossNet is a e-commerce product. It's like a four person volleyball game. It's pretty cool. You want to check it out. And their company is growing so much that they're really sold out. I mean, they're just taking pre-orders. So you're going to get the story behind how that timed up perfectly with them, what marketing strategies they're using, how they're following up with comment, with comments, with questions, with customer support, and how they're using user-generated content to really get all the content for their ads and things that are going to help them for the next six months and next couple of years. So go into the show notes. You can get Chris's email address, send him questions, and really we can all learn a lot of great things during these difficult times. Remember that your customers, your clients, uh, your employees are the most important people. So take care of them, act fast, um, act responsible, have some empathy for their situation and realize that there are opportunities. Let's jump into this short and punchy episode. Hey, Chris, uh, we're going to have a pretty exciting conversation. One, because your company is growing right now. And two, all of us are in this self-contained world and you guys took advantage of that and you've not only built a community but you've built a business that's like doubling tripling and growing so uh let's dissect what's going on uh so we invented the world's first four-way volleyball net so we started the company in 2017 and what we've seen is that the more nets that we get into the world the more people mar- are marketing our products for free so we're, we're having lower ad costs the game is more familiar to people people are putting user-generated content up there. So the more nets we get out into the world, the better. And so now during this COVID period, people are buying it for their friends or family or just for their house that they're quarantined in, setting it up in their backyard. And people are appearing across the street and seeing, oh, what's that four-way volleyball net? Let me go buy it. So it's just set off this chain reaction uh, for the last 60 days. Okay. And it's so much of a chain reaction that you guys are actually sold out and you're just taking pre-orders now. Is that right? Essentially. Yeah. So we had a ton of inventory that we were more than prepared for in my eyes, uh, that we had enough two, three months in advance, just ready to go. We were on a good order and cadence. Uh, there's a lead time that's involved with manufacturing any product, uh, but then this hits and then we start selling four or five times X a day. Uh, and over time that just deplenished our inventory. Uh, we had some big purchase orders with stores that we were pumped to start with. Uh, Academy Sports, they now sell CrossNet at 256 locations. So we had to fulfill that order, which took a lot of potential orders away from customers. So it was a learning process. Uh, but yeah, now we're sold out. We're waiting for new inventory. It's on the boat. Some of it's on a boat. Some of it's still being made. Uh, but yeah, we just purchased well over 20,000 units for customers who are waiting. Wow. I mean, that's like a good problem to have. Um, yeah. <laughs> but it's also, it's stressful right now. So super stressful. Uh, tell us what's going on in the day-to-day ops of the company and help us understand like how you're navigating this right now. Yeah. So th- there's a, there's a fine balance that we're, we're leaning towards. It's like selling too much product versus like customer service because you want, you need to temper expectations. People Sometimes don't see it on the website. Oh, that the order's not coming to June. We do a very good job of communicating. We have staff on call uh, working on customer service around the clock. But uh, there's definitely a lot more customer service issues to be had when somebody's pre-ordering it rather than just getting it customarily in two days like they normally would. We've ramped up the ads just to build more sales and build traction because I think as an owner of the business, it's six months when the world hopefully goes back to normal and completely like there's a new normal. I think we would regret not pushing the ads and selling at the rate that we're selling now. So we're definitely taking advantage of getting our game out there. And on the opposite end of the spectrum, it's just being honest with customers, customer service, full transparency. And if somebody asks for their money back or needs their money for whatever situation, 
got to refund them immediately. Okay. So you're definitely taking care of customers right away. Is, is there a certain platform that customers are going through? Like, you know, we, we try and, you know, get people to go through uh, a support help channel or something like that. But I imagine like you're probably fielding things instead of Instagram or like Twitter direct messages or stuff like that. Right. Yeah, of course. So we, we try to filter everything to our, our hotmail, like info at cross We have a chat box on our website that is normally active 24 seven. So if you, you leave them a message and look at back to you within like five minutes uh, to help you with your order. And then we have a phone support as well. So we've definitely ramped up customer service within the last 90 days. So we're, we're fully staffed there. And then on the shipping side, we have a team that runs our whole shipping center. So we're, we're shipping out orders as fast as possible when they do land and come. So we'll be good. So there. Let's go back to the growth side of things. Uh, you're pushing really hard on hard on ads and one, Ads are extremely cheap right now. Inventory's down. It means costs are down. So talk to us. Why is it that you spotted that? And what made you decide to really go all in? Yeah. So, I mean, for the last few years, like we've kind of been honing in on our sweet spot for our ads. Uh, as much as a four-way volleyball game, our dream persona is a 25-year-old who's athletic at the beach, has a shirt off, he's spiking it, has a bunch of girls watching him. Uh, but really the people who are buying are the moms and dads who are on Facebook and trying to get their son or daughter off the couch and off their cell phone and out in the backyard for an hour. So uh, moms and dads are more bored than ever. They're on their computer and they're watching it. So we're seeing way more impressions with our ads, which is driving our cost per acquisition way down. And at that point, you just scale the ad, get more eyeballs and you're, you're printing cash. So it'd be kind of stupid not to do it. So we're, we're raising our ad spend as long as we see the levels and thresh, thresholds that we approve for how much we want to make profit. And yeah, we're running those ads all day long and then doing do, doing similar stuff on Instagram as well okay. as Google. So a certain ad platform that's working best for you right now or that you're seeing just resonates? Right now, it's yeah, it's, it's always Facebook. Facebook's always the, the one that drives tons of social. Uh, we're getting upwards of 10,000 visitors a day to our site, which is great. Um, I know my conversion rate, so it's kind of predictive. And that's the best thing as a business owner, being able to have predictable revenue, being able to forecast. Uh, so that's been nice. But on the opposite end, we've taken really big strides with email marketing uh, because that's essentially outside of the cost of hiring somebody to create the emails and the copywriter and the, the sign-up fee for Klaviyo. Those are much cheaper sales, much, much cheaper than driving ads through Facebook. And you're actually wasting money if you're not fully funneled with email marketing. So we've, we've spent so much time in email marketing. We're, we're trying to drive it up to be about 15% of our revenue. And that's where you get the, the cheap. The, that's where you really make a profit as a business. So it's off email and off of SMS and off organic, of course. So. Yeah, so Clavio is a pretty amazing platform. Uh, incredible how like targeted you can give us stuff. You mentioned SMS. Uh, I'd love to hear your plan and like how you guys are executing on that. Yeah, so I'd be the first to admit we're not doing very good on it. Uh, and that's going to be a big area of growth, hopefully in Q2 and Q3. Uh, but right now, what I've been working on is email is just creating flows. So if, somebody, if I capture an email, which is about 10% of the time to the site, uh, they're going to get go through a flow of, anywhere from seven to 10 touch points. First, they'll get their discount for the first two touch points. And then it's going to be like FOMO, like, hey, you didn't order this product. Your neighbor next door is having a blast with it and you're not invited. Like you need to have this game. So it's all that type of content and messaging. So we're going to do that on the SMS side as well. Short and sweet text, reminders, flash sales, all that good stuff. I'm, I'm pumped because that's just such untapped potential and revenue that we're sleeping on. We just need to find the time to do it. Yeah. You know, it's kind of crazy because I think that if you look at the demographics of what works well uh, with mobile, you know, it's, it's really in that like millennial and gen Z's, like that's what they want. Whereas like a lot of boomers and gen X, they want to like, they're kind of staying in that email space. Exactly. What I'd love to hear is this. So I think often, mis- uh, and hopefully I'm not uh, setting a trap either, but oftentimes I see mistakes where uh, a customer comes in through a certain channel and then as a business owner, like we want to like push them into our channels, like the ones that we feel are best. So if someone comes in through you, like through Facebook, do you have nurturing campaigns and stuff you're doing to continue with that relationship? Or are you just like, Hey, like this is the only way that we work. Yeah. So if they come to our website, uh, we actually used to in the, in the past, just have different lead captures. So if it's like, Oh, Hey, Facebook friend. So you give them different messaging. So, 
hey, here's your Facebook code compared to Twitter. And that way we can make those attributions. And then keeping them back into the funnel where they came from, when they do place that order, uh, their first message is, hey, here's our private Facebook group, the VIP CrossNet Club, where CrossNet players will be sharing content, meetups, tournaments, all that good stuff. So it's kind of enriching and building that community out what we're doing on Facebook and also on Instagram. And we're also working on building a, and a whole brand new ambassador and event site. So when we could go back out and play, uh, there's going to be people like, Oh, I'm having a tournament in San Diego, $5 buy-in. And that's all going to be done through the cross net site, which is going to be awesome. That's awesome. You know, for listeners, um, I really hope that you're listening to like the conversation that we're getting because these are some ridiculously good strategies. Um, I've owned several e-commerce companies and and most people aren't having the problem of like being inundated with leads like this. And it sounds like you guys are still staying afloat. So I'm, I'm really impressed. Yeah, It's it's a lot of work and (laughs) it's just, it's, it's exciting because there's so much untapped potential still like SMS. We have two messages that go out. I know when we build up that funnel to be like, Oh, flash sale every once a month. If we run a flash sale for 50 bucks, like so much money could be tapped. So we just turned, uh, we're starting to like ask for phone numbers and really try to build that funnel up. That way when we're really pumped for it, like three three months, four months from now, we'll have a good database of stuff instead of starting from scratch. So anyone listening, start your email early, start your SMS early, get the data. Uh, even if you don't have the time to build out the funnels yet, at least collect the customer data. Totally agree. You and you're building those retargeting lists right now with all that traffic. So, I mean, that's, I think where a lot of people exactly. don't see it. Traffic's so cheap, build those lists right now, those audiences. And then, you know, this spring, this summer, fall, whatever that may be. Let's play armchair quarterback for a second. So what would you have done different knowing you know, the circumstances that we're in taking out like supply chain issues, because like that was just, um, you know, a wrench in it, but like, what would you have done different that would have made your job and your profitability better? I think I would have invested in some better UGC and actually making a better like montage of it. So right now we run like, like a five second video ad and that's it. I think if we would like actually take the time and it's just all about finding the time to like, here's our five or 10 best clips and got that together, we would have had much better performing ads, even though they're performing well right now. And also interacting with previous customers to get that UGC. Uh, we start we started doing that during COVID and running like, oh, here's a $50 Amazon promotion. Like whoever sends the best video by midnight tonight gets a $50 Amazon card or a $50 gift card to their favorite restaurant. We started doing all these creative ideas during COVID. We should have been doing them six months ago. So we're getting, people are sending images of their families and friends and videos all the time. And it was tough to get that before. Uh, But now we're just blasting out an email that takes a half an hour to make and we're getting content like crazy. So I definitely regret not asking people for content and rewarding them with small little things. Even like a $5 Amazon gift card gets you tons of reviews. So little things that don't cost your business much. Uh, but you can monetize off that big time. Uh, and so our audience knows UGC stands for user generated content. Now, um, going back to this, are you using the UGC content like for your Facebook ads and YouTube ads? Yes. After we get permission, hundred percent. Okay. That's yeah. how we blew up our uh, beauty business. So we first, and this is just the strategy that worked for us. And I'm sharing this with listeners. I haven't actually shared this on the podcast. We went after YouTube influencers and like, like uh, low to mid-level influencers and we hooked them up with the product in return that they gave us a video. So we get like, I don't know, call it 15 videos, chop those videos down into commercials that we used on YouTube and on for Facebook ads. And it was like the best social proof out there. And I didn't have to do like, we did, you know, model shoots and all that. And if you've ever done a model shoot, you'll know why you never ever want to do it again. Like you're looking at me and laughing because yeah, exactly. you know what it's like yeah. to work with models and all that. It just sucks. Um, so UGC, you would have done that much sooner. Yeah, dude. The, the cheap content is the best content. Like people like real stuff and the drones and all these $10,000 cameras, they're cool and all, and they'll get you good content for when you need it, like at trade shows or stuff like that. But people like real stuff that they can record on their phone. And that's a, that's a smart strategy with the mid-level influencers because influencers are dime a dozen. Everybody wants to get paid for, for thinking they're, they're good looking. So you can negotiate the hell out of them. Uh, if somebody asked me for $200, I'm like, I'm going to send you my product. Like you were going to buy my product anyway. You'd love it. So 
I'll send you the product for free. You send me a video and that's a deal. If not, like I'll, I'll move it on to the next. And that's exactly how that world works. Now there are some influencers that can move the needle, but be really careful. And we're like in 2020 now, the game has changed. It's not like 2015. Exactly. It's such a big, as a startup, like it's such a big risk to invest so much money into influencers really thinking they're going to move units because at the end of the day, I can nine, 99 times out of a hundred, you're going to get more traffic from running an ad on Facebook and actually knowing what you're doing than just giving it to some random Joe Smo who claims to have an Instagram following. That's not active. All right. So let's forecast where's CrossNet two years from now. I'm not going to do like 10 years, five years, all that, because you know, you're, you're going to be a baller. You're going to sell it to some private <laughs> equity and then <laughs> it's not really like, where are you guys two years from now? Two years from now. Uh, so right now we're in 4,000 schools. I would be hoping that we'd be in at least 15,000 schools across the United States worldwide, uh, just teaching kids how to play volleyball in a fun way. So our, our game is kind of in two pillars. One, it's a sport, four-way volleyball, game to 11, win by two, super competitive and fun. The other side of things is kids are learning how to play volleyball in a fun new way, learning how to serve, learning how to bump, set, spike, all that good stuff. Because when I went to gym class when I was 12, I hated it. Because I touched the ball once in 45 minutes and it would be 10 on 10. It would be an army of kids versus an army of kids and you hit the ball once. So now kids are like pumped to be hitting it and, and like really having fun in class. And then like on a financial side, just we definitely should be at every retail store. Like I walk into every Target, that thing better be on the shelves. Uh, I'd be pretty upset if that doesn't happen. What was it like to see your product on the shelf for the first time? That's wild. That was a wild feeling. I remember like... We, we were in Utah, uh, we were in Utah going snowboarding and I was like, I, sh- I was like, Oh, that's, there's a Shields down the road, which is like a Midwest uh, sporting goods store. And I'm like, I think they have, it. it's like 25 minutes away. So we just rolled up and we like asked the, the customer service. I'm like, can you walk us to the cross net? And we're like, that's our product. <laughs> like it was wild. <laughs> it was so cool. So now we're in like 300 stores. Like it doesn't really face us too much, but it's still a crazy good it's the first store though. That's the one. Yeah, it was the, that was yeah that was the one. I had a Ferris wheel in store too, so like the Instagram story looked really cool. It was, you it was like, fun. excuse me, do you know where any fireworks are? Can I set them off in the building? <laughs> <laughs> we were so hyped. That's awesome, listeners. A lot of things that we've unpacked in here. Uh, obviously, we could get into deeper things, but what we want to do on this episode for the current environment is to help you understand that while some businesses are hurting, there are other businesses that are seeing opportunity that are taking advantage of that in a, in the right way. And they're growing. We didn't even touch on the community that you've built. And that is something that I truly admire. We did touch on like how you are reaching out to your list, adding people to Facebook groups. Um, let's, let's hit that for just a few seconds. And then um, we're going to let people uh, find a way to get in touch course, with you. Yeah. I mean, for on the community standpoint, our whole mission is to just make life better. I mean, my, my favorite times, my favorite memories in the last few years are when my cell phone is away and like tucked away and I'm having fun and interacting with my friends and my family. Cause that's when the real memories are made. Not when you're on in- Instagram for the 17th hour of the day. So we're really trying to bring families together. Uh, if you just look at like the testimonials that we've got over the last two weeks, it's like, this game has literally saved my family. We've been screaming and fighting. Now we're outside having a blast. So it's cool to see and really gratifying to know that we're connecting families, making people have a better time while they're getting a good workout and, and staying engaged and connected. Uh, I'm pumped. I'm pumped for the future and for summer to come and hopefully the world to go back to normal and people go out and, and play cross and have more fun. I love it. That's great. Over. How can people get in touch with you and uh, where should we send them so that they can get hooked up with their own you game? You can hit me up at Chris, C-H-R-I-S at crossnetgame.com. If you have any questions, happy to help. Uh, every entrepreneur knows how it is to start a company. It sucks in the beginning. It's scary. There's a lot of risks. So if I could be a sounding board for anybody, uh, happy to help in any way. Uh, crossnetgame.com is the website. Crossnet game on everything. Uh, awesome. Check it out. Well, thanks for spending some time with us today. And listeners, thanks for uh, tuning into this episode. It was a lot of fun.